<laughs> so we're gonna be talking about 10 reasons why you should not buy any folding phone ever yes actually well for right now maybe not ever because technology might come out in the future where it could be pretty good and efficient to buy one but right now definitely not reason number one it's expensive yeah the galaxy fold is already two thousand dollars huawei said hold my beer they went for two point six thousand we don't know what apple's going to offer or google but judging by those initial price points it's going to be a lot yeah and we don't even know if apple or google are going to actually come out with a foldable phone in 2019 but just from what we've seen so far that is a very steep price to pay for a phone now another thing to keep in mind is that both of those phones only support 5g so that could be another marketing reason as to why they're more expensive there's no folding phone with 4g or ever will be so keep that in mind that was reason number two reason number three is it's going to be very difficult for app developers to create apps mm -hmm. that can simultaneously switch between screen sizes so we saw some in some of the demos where they were using like google maps maybe not mm -hmm. google maps but maps function and stock apps like that but to use widespread apps like maybe Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, that can get kind of difficult because it forces these, these companies to produce new apps or to update their, their apps. Number four, the hinge. Yeah. Whenever you have a moving part in anything, that's pretty much a point of weakness. Like we've seen some examples of those, those phones with the, the camera mechanism that comes out as a selfie cam so that these phones don't have to have a notch. Yes. And those have actually malfunctioned. Well, yeah, we also used to have flip phones uh, usually whenever someone breaks a flip phone, it's where it flips. So this, this hinge or the, the bendable part of the phone, Apple has actually said this could be an issue in colder weather. They have developed some patents as a remedy to fix this, this problem. Ooh, yes. Where they'd heat up the screen, right? One and of those. And keep it warm. Yeah. This way in the winter or in colder temperatures, when it is bent, it's not being damaged. Mm -hmm. This brings us to our next reason, also along the lines of the crease or the bend, that will get very annoying. So when you're on a screen, yeah. you want to be have smooth flow. Yes. There's nothing worse than playing a game or doing something like that. And then there's like a crease mm. just to kind of mess up your whole game. So the screen's not flat. Yeah, exactly. Or it might be flat, but it'll, there'll be a noticeable crease, obviously, because that's where the bend is or, or the, yeah, the hinge. It's very true. So even if you don't like it, there's also the chance that it could malfunction, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it were to malfunction, like we said, it would be the, the movable part, which is here. Now, another issue that the Samsung Fold has faced is it needed multiple cameras. Mm -hmm. It is rocking a total of six camera sensors on it in order to give you cameras wherever. Yeah, and that is just a reason for them to increase the price. So you have a camera on the front, you mm -hmm. have a camera on the uh, folded side, and then you have a camera on the back. Yes. Are all those really needed? We don't really think so. Our next reason is kind of our personal preference, but we kind of think it's a little bit gimmicky, similar to what you've seen on like for say the Google Glass mm. or the Facebook Watch. If you guys, or not Facebook Watch, the Facebook phone, if you guys remember they that had, at all. They had a phone? Yeah, or they they were pushing for it. I don't think they ever came out Can with it. Can you only go on Facebook? Probably, but it could be one of those gimmicky products that don't actually take off. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Samsung's hoping they're taking off. It's going to take off, but it potentially won't. Another reason, look at this. Look at how thin this is. At the moment, phones are pretty streamlined. It's metal with glass and glass. The foldable phones don't feel this premium. Now, we haven't held the foldable phones yet, but... Yeah, and it's strange because both Samsung and Huawei have mentioned that their phones, their foldable phones, that is the thinnest that they can get. So we've grown accustomed to a very thin product and every year it seems to get thinner and thinner and thinner. Mm -hmm. What we've seen over the past few years when Apple got rid of the headphone jack to make their phones really thin, but then increasing the size to 11 millimeters like we've seen on the, the new foldable devices, mm -hmm. that is pretty substantial. I'm sure the customer clientele will not like that. One of our last reasons is Given the price that it is, $2,000 and $2,600, why not just get your phone yep. and then get a tablet to go on side with it? That's true. It's not really necessary to have them both in one. So why, like I have my phone for a reason. I, ha I use it for, for everyday calling, texting, mm -hmm. Instagram, stuff like that. I don't have a tablet, but if I were to get one, I would use that for, for other products or for other services. Mm -hmm. 
to combine the two, I feel like that's kind of gimmicky. A lot of the times when you have multiple devices, each one is sort of allocated to doing a certain thing. So if I were to go on an iPad, I'd go there with the intent of watching Netflix, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So this is also one of the reasons, like we said earlier, how it's gonna be difficult for app developers because they usually design for phones mm -hmm. and then, then they design for tablets. But to combine the two, that is gonna be very tricky. So you have your phone and then you, you unfold it and it becomes a tablet, that could be tricky. Speaking just particularly for the Huawei phone, how yeah. you have the front facing screen as the phone and then it bends out to a tablet, that could be pretty tricky. Yeah, it would be. So Nathan, final thoughts. Would you ever get a folding phone? Right now, no. True. I don't see, it's it's more for early adopters and people who want to say, hey, I have a foldable phone. But for me, I want to wait until the market, like we said earlier, is more mature and there mm -hmm. is more options out there. And they come down in price. Yeah. I'm going to go with yes. Really? I want to be a part of that, I have a folding phone type <laughs> of, of club. Of course you do. And I also feel like in order for foldable phones to A, become less gimmicky, it needs funding. Yeah. So maybe being part of that first wave would help. But other than those two reasons, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's a waste of money. Those were our 10 reasons why you shouldn't get a foldable phone. We're pretty positive there's going to be a lot more when people actually start using it in the real world. If you guys come up with any different reasons why you shouldn't get a foldable phone, let us know in the comments down below. And subscribe if you're new.